So Graham Morgan's my name. I'm based here in Adelaide. Um, I've, uh, I'm, I'm an agronomist by trade. I've been working in the ag industry for about 30 odd years, and I'll start to show my age. Um, previously worked for Elders, and for the last um, eight or so years, I've been working for Ag World. I look after South Australia, Northern New South Wales, uh, Queensland, uh, New Zealand, and as of the last um, couple of days, I've been doing a little bit of work up in the Pacific Islands. Uh, where um, some uh, industries or farmers in Tonga are taking on the, the software, along with Fiji. Uh, so interesting uh, life travelling around. But Hagwell's an independent global platform for the data-driven future of agriculture. A lot of what uh, people talk about in the ag game these days is around data. Um, who owns the data? Who's using the data? In our uh, vision of the uh, process, it's the farmer owns the data. We're independent. Um, uh, sometimes refer to our competitors. And, um, we're owned still by the um, original founders of the business and the venture capitalists that put the money in to get us going. Uh, we have no ownership in or no ownership by a chemical company or seed companies, which you'll see in a lot of the global positions. So we're independent, uh, we don't sell data. The data that um, is generated by farmers and their advisors is owned by the farmers and their advisors. And it's, I think listening to the um, Israeli gentleman this morning, um, our aim is to simplify what farmers and their advisors do, not make their life more complicated. Uh, everything we do is about um, uh, reducing the uh, requirements to create that information making it simple to use, uh, easy user interface, um, a day-to-day farmer or day-to-day -day activities for a farmer and their advisors is complicated enough uh, without uh, attempting to use software that doesn't uh, help in that process. So we aim to make it less complicated, not more complicated. So Agwell, we've been going since 2009, so just uh, made it uh, past our 10th birthday, which for ag tech star or ag tech companies, um, it's quite an achievement. Um, we're probably not considered a startup anymore. Um, and as I mentioned, a lot of the uh, what we see in the ag tech, well, the, our farm management space is systems like ourselves being bought by someone. Uh, we recently reversed that strategy and have um, actually bought a business in the US called Green Book, which provides label um, and uh, warning rate um, information, which we currently use in the US. It's not here in Australia as yet, but by purchasing the business out of the US will give us that capacity to change some of our library function and search functions that we have here in Australia. Our primary markets, um, the US started here in Australia, but then expanded into the US, expanded into New Zealand in about the same time, and we've just uh, launched in Canada uh, back late last year, so getting our first customers in the Canadian market. But everything that we've done was, uh, well, the foundation was you know, Western Australia and moved across the rest of Australia. In each of the um, markets we operate, we reskin the product to suit the uh, actual marketplace that we're operating in. Uh, 50 plus employees, half of those are programmers, so the code writers that drive the system in the background. The people that do the things that I've got no idea what they're doing um, because I operate at the user interface, which is what interacts with farmers on a day to day basis. It's the user interface um, is what drives the well, drives the day to day use. 35,000 registered users, approximately half of those are here in Australia. Um, Australia, the agronomist market is about uh, somewhere between 1,200 and 1,400 agronomists and we've got over 900 agronomist advisors using the system. I uh, should, should say there, there's approximately uh, uh, shade over 2,000 subscribed farmers, another 3,000 using the system um, uh, on a day-to-day -day view only basis, so interacting with AgWorld but uh, not actually subscribed. And then there's about another 10,000 farmers who have access to the system or just receiving information direct from their agronomist advisor. So digitising farm information. Uh, it's a difficult space when people are still using Excel and paper and whiteboards. Growers use lots of different machines, lots of different monitors. I often get farmers saying to me they... Uh, 
Um, they're not tech savvy, um, don't use computers, and I jump into their header or tractor, and there's more computer screens in, uh, in those headers and tractors than I'm sitting on my desk. Uh, farmers are using technology every day. Sometimes it's more applicable to their day-to-day -day activities in that um, they, they like putting oil in a tractor. So a computer in a tractor is different to a computer that uh, they hold in their hand, a smartphone, um, mobile them, or you only operate on Apple systems. But uh, their farmers react differently to uh, technology that's sitting in a, t in a tractor versus technology that they're carrying around with them. Connectivity is, pr is poor in many rural areas, as we know. Um, our mobile devices will work both um, online and offline, so growers and agronomists can use the system all day long out in the paddock, and when they return to their office, uh, back into the kitchen, um, off to McDonald's on the way through town, uh, they can jump on Wi-Fi and all the information will sync together. So they can, um, whilst uh, connectivity may be poor, they can still use what we provide on a day-to-day -day basis or throughout their working day. Lack of standardised data and APIs, and I'll touch that on that in a little while, um, but everyone talks about moving information. Integration is a big, uh, big topic in the, uh, that's the free carton of beer. Um, everyone talks about integrating. Oh, I want to bring my weather station information into the um, into ag world. I want to bring my uh, machine data into ag world. Um, I want to shift products from one spot to another. Uh, but the lack of standardised data and the lack of I APIs or application program interfaces, the middleware between someone like ourselves and other pieces of software, uh, makes that an interesting task. As I say, oils ain't oils. APIs and integrations aren't uh, well, as easy as we might think, but that's the challenge the industry faces. Well, I see support for technology, one of our strengths, but um, out in rural communities, uh, not the highest priority. Um, and few farms really have a technology plan or an, um, an IT technology plan. They may have plans around what new tractor or header they may, may be buying, but are not particularly looking at what software they'll be using to help them manage their farms. So we're a collaborative platform. So we work across each of these systems in our, in our own system and uh, sharing the information between retailers. People, farmers buy their day-to-day -day farm inputs, fertiliser, seed, insecticide, herbicide. The growers themselves advisors, so potentially um, uh, consultants uh, working to advise farmers on what they do, um, and significantly um, agronomists and their applicators. We run a power a permission system which allows each of these people to inter interact with AgWorld, interact with the farmer, uh, depending on how they wish to. Um, in some instances we might have uh, simple production data shifting between an agronomist and his uh, or the farmer. Others we might have uh, financial information around the cost of production shifting between the farmer and the agronomist or the farmer and his retailer so that retailers can get an understanding of their seasonal input needs. System runs, so we have a uh, planning and budgeting tool, uh, precision ag, core GIS, so everything operates on maps, um, and currently rolling out some features around uh, NDVI imagery, uh, bringing importing layers as applied layers, yield maps, uh, nitrogen removal maps, an integration we have with a company called PC2 or Precision Cropping Technologies. And that's an instance where uh, an integration is working because two companies willing to talk to each other allow the transfer of data. We have a standardised piece of information being the uh, GIS referencing of fields. In season agronomy, day to day agronomy, uh, as I say, 75% of the agronomist market in Australia use AgWorld. Uh, they're providing day-to-day -day recommendations, plans, observations to their growers for the growers to then act on, uh, convert or potentially convert those activities into actual events to create their farm records and start producing data that they can use day-to-day -day in the future, uh, referring to the past as to what they've done. Um, and significant reporting and analytics. A few letters moved around up there, but it's part of the presentations. 
Um, any data entered into AgWorld can be pulled out of AgWorld, um, whether that be product information, field level information, observations, uh, and reported on. Um, we currently will have an integration if anyone's used uh, Power BI, an analytics dashboard uh, that we've just done another integration. It's where uh, mobile devices, we're Apple only, but this integration is with a Microsoft company. So Microsoft Power BI does some amazing things. Uh, simply pulling the information out of AgWorld into Power BI, some templates built. Um, incredible some of the things that uh, uh, these systems can do. Pre-season planning, uh, as I say, either done by farmers or in conjunction with their, uh, uh, their agronomists, their advisors, allows them to work at rotations, um, allows them to put a, system, a season budget together. Um, how much fertiliser am I going to need? How much seed will I need next year to store at harvest time? Um, and simply uh, uh, we can plan on the iPad change crop types from um, wheat to canola, depending on the market, depending on the rainfall at start of season, and uh, report on these things. So on the iPad, we can put a plan in place in about eight taps, um, which will then generate each of these aspects, product requirements for the season, work scheduling, when do I roughly need to uh, put pre-plant fertiliser in the ground, when do I roughly need to start looking at uh, post-emergent chemistry, um, all reportable, eight taps on an iPad, and you can change the varieties. So I can get uh, planning in AgWorld, or uh, well planning uh, can be done um, three years in advance, five years in advance, uh, five weeks in advance of sowing a crop, depending on how the seasons change, um, or five days after the uh, crop has gone in the ground, you can plan for the rest of the season. So planning's like a budget, the crop plans that we put in are like a recipe. Um, the activities that sit under those plans are like the ingredients that go in to make that recipe. But as I say, collaboration. We're farmers working with advisors. Advisors are doing this sort of work on a day-to-day -day basis. Farmers will typically plan um, once or twice a year. Um, Agronomists are doing it day to day, so they have more experience in the planning phase, but do it in collaboration with their, their grower. So whilst we have technology here, a lot of this work either can be done or will be done, either sitting in a header next to a, uh, a farmer, sitting at the farmer's kitchen table, working out what he needs to do for the coming season. In-season agronomy, so this is the lifeblood of the, the um, uh, agronomist advisors. People like the agronomists that work for elders, um, uh, retail agronomists, agronomists working for the likes of uh, rural directions, um, so uh, consulting agronomists. We all operate in a similar space. Uh, agronomists create plans, recommendations, observations. They can draw on maps. Um, so we can see in the bottom, the pivot circle down there. Uh, um, I'm guessing slides. Uh, yield information, um, so precision, things like that we're rolling into AgWorld now. We're not doing it, that's the aim of integrations, is to bring that style of information in from the experts. It's about layering um, and integrations, as I say, but working with someone that is willing to work with us, um, commercially sound on both fronts. Top right, maps, farm maps and the activities that go in field by field. As I say, scheduling record curse, that's complete farm management. We operate, we operate in the, um, the cropping space or the, the plant space, essentially. Um, AgWorld is used here in Australia in, on anything from opium poppies in Tasmania through to pineapples in North Queensland. We're used in pasture country in, um, in New Zealand and dairy farms to do uh, 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 forage production. Spuds um, in in New Zealand, uh, yams and taro in, in Tonga, um, basil in um, Nandi in Fiji. So we operate across any anything that you put in the ground, uh, feed and water, um, AgWorld will cover that space. Those are scheduled jobs, 
Uh, so schedule workflow, keep records, determine cost of production. I often ask farmers when I do presentations to them how many of uh, you can tell me how much you've spent on your farming activities uh, for the current season. Um, I might start on a paddock level. Very rare, unless they're using agro, can a farmer tell me how much he's actually spent on a field, spent on his overall farming activities for a current season. Uh, I've let them say uh, farmers are dealing with multi-million dollar businesses um, and sometimes can't tell us what the, uh, what the cost of production is or where their spending is at. Agwell helps them do some of those things. Insights, um, well, how's it look? What uh, withholding periods do I have? How much nitrogen have I applied to a particular field? Um, how much phosphorus have I applied without? Simply by doing actual events allows them to create the insights into what they're doing and what's happened on their farm. And as I mentioned, reporting. But, uh, key to the uh, process is our standardised data. Uh, Agwell controls the naming of products um, and the naming of pests, problems, uh, crop varieties. Uh, we control all that so simply that uh, products are named the same way throughout Agworld. So on the input side there, each of those products is a different glyphosate, um, named differently, uh, recorded differently, so basically free typed into any systems um, except Agwell. Uh, fields can you see that could be called home, could be called home place, could be called a number. Um, but once you have people free typing information like that, so non-standardised data, it's impossible to in integrate it. There's no way of sharing that information around or matching it between systems. So what does that create? It creates an epic file. So anyone that's trying to um, integrate systems that don't have standardised data um, we'll know the drama involved there. As I round up power max in ag world is just round up power, power max and that field is home. But uh, one of the tricks with the uh, field naming uh, and particularly some of the integrations we're doing in the precision space is that uh, the one real common factor between a, f a field in ag world and a field in uh, John Deere and a John Deere tractor is the geolocation of that field. Where that field is doesn't change, the naming may change, but so we don't match field names, we match geospatial uh, information to uh, work out fields that overlay each other. But standardised data allows us to play in this space, so integrating with other systems. So some of these are, are US based, but some of them, uh, or half of them are Australian, so John Deere, global. John Deere approached us to uh, start working on integrating machine data coming out of the John Deere tractor and the My John Deere system. We're bringing through start-stop times. Uh, we're bringing through uh, field uh, maps, as applied maps coming out of John Deere headers, John Deere tractors, uh, tractors using uh, John Deere rate controllers. Um, interesting thing with John Deere, we don't share at this point in time, that's one John Deere is working on, we don't share product information. So do a recommendation in AgWorld, send that to a John Deere tractor and the tractor will know, or the tractor driver will be able to see on his John Deere screen, he would think uh, the products that he needs to put into a spray rig. But John Deere in their early days forgot to uh, build a standardised database and allow free typing, so uh, I mean, John Deere, a farmer may put in, I'm going to put a weed spray in, when that weed spray is really glyphosate and 2,4-D amine or sharpen or whatever it might be. So we can't match information at this point in time until John Deere catch up and build their own or use ours uh, product database. Power BI I've mentioned, um, CSBP, uh, fertiliser company in Western Australia, but we integrate information with their uh, soil testing lab. APAL here in South mm. Australia, um, we're integrating soil testing information. Uh, agronomist goes out to the field, um, takes a soil sample, scans a barcode, he's already told the system what he's going to be, uh, what he wants tested. Uh, scans the barcode on his iPad, drops the sample in a box and posts it off to APAL. APAL results um, get fed straight back into the planning page within Agwell. So the uh, soil testing integration around the globe is working extremely well. Um, figured, um, 
accounting software or an add-on to the zero accounting fig. It's specifically designed for um, rural applications um, where feed planning information defigured or farmer feeds the planning information defigured. That feeds into zero and can compare cash flows uh, with um, actual information in AgWell. Satamap's our provider of the precision, uh, some of the precision software. What makes us successful? Okay, support team. Anyone that uses AG will, will know what the support or how good their support crew is in Western Australia. Um, they're every day of the week, on, except for weekends, uh, to provide support to our subscribers. And what keeps us moving along is continual um, updates, continual improvements that our programmers, uh, who are all based in Perth, um, are far a few in the US, but uh, it's going to be our programs are based in Perth doing work only on AgWorld. So, thank you, and I think we're into question time. <laughs>